We've been talking about the chemistry of 1,3-dicarbonyl compounds, and in this webcast we'll put this chemistry to use in order to make complicated molecules from simple building blocks. To begin, let me remind you that in the last webcast we learned that beta-keto esters were the products of the Claisen condensation. Upon ester hydrolysis, those products can be transformed to the beta-keto acids, which have the unique property that they're easily decarboxylated. And as a consequence of that, it's possible to take beta-keto acids and transform them by bond-breaking there into CO2 and the corresponding ketone. We'll see on the next slide how we can put this to use for synthetic purposes, but first let's, under, let's understand why it is that the beta-keto acid is so easily decarboxylated while other kinds of carboxylic acids are quite resistant to decarboxylation. The curved arrows show the special role that the beta-keto group plays in this process. You can see the loss of CO2 and the production of the enol, which illustrates the importance of that beta-keto group. By a conformational change involving these six atoms, it's possible to set up a cyclical transition state that you see here in order to allow that electron flow to take place smoothly and continuously so that that passage of the hydrogen from the beta keto side all the way over to what will become the enol oxygen is easily facilitated. Now keto enol tautomerization of this enol produces the carbonyl derivative. Let's see how this chemistry can be put to use in synthesis. We'll begin with the synthesis of carboxylic acids and if your goal is to make a carboxylic acid in which some variable portion R is attached to the alpha position of a carboxylic acid, then a good way to do it is with what's known as the melonic ester synthesis. It's called this because these more complicated carboxylic acids are derived from the simple building block melonic ester whose structure is shown here. The synthesis is achieved by a sequence of three steps that begins by deprotonating the alpha position of the melonic ester. The alpha position has hydrogens that are quite acidic, and so deprotonation with ethoxide generates the ester enolate that's shown here. The next step is an alkylation step where some alkyl halide is involved in an SN2 type substitution to attach the R group to the alpha position. This 1,3-diester undergoes hydrolysis, and so in the presence of acid and water, we can transform those ethyl esters into carboxylic acids. They're 1,3-dicarboxylic acids, and so just like the beta-keto ester, they're quite prone to decarboxylation. Loss of CO2 by warming produces that alpha-alkylated carboxylic acid. A second example of this chemistry involves the synthesis of methyl ketones, where we have a variable portion that's attached to the alpha carbon of that methyl ketone. This is known as the acetyl acetic ester synthesis, and it takes advantage of this common building block in which we're first going to deprotonate again at the alpha position to make a good nucleophile. SN2 displacement on an alkyl halide makes the new carbon-carbon bond between the alkyl position and where the bromide was attached. Under the conditions of hydrolysis, where we hydrolyze the ester group and then neutralize it, we make the beta-keto acid, which, upon gentle warming, is set up for decarboxylation to make the product the methyl ketone. Both the melonic ester synthesis and the acetoacetic ester synthesis illustrate how we can take advantage of the easy decarboxylation of beta-keto acids in order to make useful carbonyl derivatives from simple building blocks.